Shabbat Shalom, Yeladim. Yeladim means children in Hebrew. And I wish all of you children and your families a very happy Sabbath. My name is Ms. Shoshana. And today I like to talk about patience. Do you know what patience is? Have you ever waited a very long time for something? Maybe your family was planning a vacation, a really fun vacation, maybe to the beach, and you couldn't wait to feel the sand under your toes and the, and the ocean water, and you had a new boogie board, and you couldn't wait to build the biggest, best sand castle ever. Or maybe you were going camping, and you could already taste those delicious s'mores and smell the campfire and hear all the sounds of nature. Maybe you were taking a trip overseas to discover all the sights and wonders of Europe. Or possibly it was something different altogether. Maybe you were waiting on grandma and grandpa to come and you haven't seen them for a very long time and you're counting down the minutes. Or mom made a delicious chocolate cake and it's sitting right there on the counter and you just can't wait to take a piece. But mom said that you have to wait until Shabbat to eat a piece. All of those things require a lot of patience. So let me ask you, how did you wait? Did you ask your mom and dad, how many days left? How many hours? How many minutes? Did you cross out a calendar? Did you take a calendar and just kind of mark off each day as you went along? How did you handle waiting? You know, the Brit Hadashah or the New Testament talks about the fruits of the Spirit. The fruit, there's nine of them, and the fruits of the Spirit are ways that we give off evidence of being a follower of Yahweh and Yeshua, the way that the world knows us. And when I think of fruits of the Spirit, I kind of picture trees. I picture fruit trees. And I picture two trees. One tree has very lush, plump, delicious plums on them because I love plums. So I'm picturing plums. And you know, the kind of taste where you just bite into a plum and the juice just like drips down. Oh, it's so good. And then the other tree is kind of has the fruit that at the end of the season where it's all withering and wrinkled and it looks disgusting. <laughs> and you really don't want to take a bite of that at all. Let me ask you, when you picture your trees, what fruit is on there? Maybe you like plums like me, or maybe you like something different like peaches. Whatever it is, picture your favorite fruit and tell me which tree do you think that Yahweh and Yeshua would want us to eat from? And what kind of fruit that he would expect to come from us? We are going to read about somebody or learn about somebody today that had to display a lot of patience. So let's listen to this story. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you've made. We thank you for another opportunity to get together in your presence, to rest on your special day, your Shabbat. And we pray that you would just be with us in a special way and that we would honor you with our worship and our praise through our singing and and through all that we do today in learning your word and learning your ways. We love you and thank you. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today our song is about the rainbow. In this world, there's a lot of people who think a lot of things about the rainbow, but Yah ordained the rainbow and he gets to say what it means. Mm -hmm. So that's what this song is about.
have him, the faithful one, make a promise because we know he'll keep it. Amen. Thank you and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, boys and girls. My name is Miss Megan, and I'm excited to be here with you today. When we last left Noah and his family, they were floating in the middle of nowhere on an ark that Yahweh had told Noah to build. They were the last people left on the face of the earth. Yahweh had wiped out everything, all living beings, all living creatures, and they saw nothing but the ocean. So, are you excited to see what happens to Noah and his family today? Me too. Let's find out. We're going to start at the end of Genesis chapter 7. You ready? Let's go. And the waters were mighty on the earth 150 days. And Elohim remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the cattle that were with him in the ark. And Elohim made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters subsided. And the fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were stopped, and the rain from the heavens was withheld. And the waters receded steadily from the earth, and at the end of the hundred and fifty days the waters diminished. And in the seventh new moon, the seventeenth day of the new moon, the ark rested on the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased steadily until the tenth new moon. In the tenth new moon, on the first day of the new moon, the tops of the mountains became visible, and it came to be at the end of forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made, and he sent out a raven which kept going out and turning back until the waters had dried up from the earth. Then he sent a dove out from him to see if the waters had receded from the face of the ground, but the dove found no resting place for its feet and returned into the ark to him, for the waters were on the face of all the earth. So he put out his hand and took it, and pulled it into the ark to himself. And he waited yet another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came to him in the evening, and see, a freshly plucked olive leaf was in its mouth, and no one knew that the waters had receded from the earth. And he waited yet another seven days, and sent out the dove which did not return to him again. And it came to be in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the new moon, that the waters were dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and saw the surface of the ground was dry. And in the second new moon, on the twenty-seventh day of the new moon, the earth was dry. And Elohim spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every life form of all flesh that is with you, of birds, of cattle, and all creeping creatures, the creeping creatures on the earth, and let them teem on the earth and bear and increase on the earth. So Noah went out, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him, every beast, every creeping creature, and every bird, whatever creeps on the earth according to their kinds, went out of the ark. And Noah built a slaughter place to Yahweh, and took every clean beast and of every clean bird and offered ascending offerings on the slaughter place. And Yahweh smelled a soothing fragrance, and Yahweh said in his heart, Never again shall I curse the ground because of man, although the inclination of man's heart is evil from his youth, and never again strike all living creatures as I have done, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night, shall not cease. And Elohim blessed Noah and his sons, and said to them, Be fruitful and increase, and fill the earth. And the fear of you, and the dread of you, is on every beast of the earth, on every bird of the heavens, on all that creeps on the ground, and on all the fish of the sea, into your hand they have been given. Every creeping creature that lives is food for you, I have given you all as I gave the green plants. But do not eat flesh with its life, its blood, but only your blood for your lives I require. From the hand of every beast I require it, and from the hand of man. From the hand of every man's brother I require the life of man. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood is shed. For in the image of Elohim has he made man. As for you, be fruitful and increase, bring forth teemingly in the earth, and increase in it. And Elohim spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I, see, 
I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you and with every living being that is with you, of the birds, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, of all that go out of the ark, every beast of the earth. And I shall establish my covenant with you. And never again is all flesh cut off by the waters of the flood. And never again is there a flood to destroy the earth. And Elohim said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you, and every living being that is with you for all generations to come. I shall set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. And it shall be, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud, and I shall remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living being of all flesh, and never again let the waters become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the rainbow shall be in the cloud, and I shall see it, to remember the everlasting covenant between Elohim and every living being of all flesh that is on the earth. And Elohim said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. And the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem and Ham and Yepheth. And Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and the earth was overspread from them. And Noah, a man of the soil, began and planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine, and was drunk, and became uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his brothers outside. So Shem and Yepheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. But their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine, and he knew what his younger son had done to him. And he said, Cursed is Canaan, let him become a servant of servants to his brothers. And he said, Blessed be Yahweh, the Elohim of Shem, and let Canaan become his servant. Let Elohim enlarge Yepheth, and let him dwell in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan become his servant. And Noah lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years. So all the days of Noah were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. Now, imagine for a minute that you are part of Noah's family. What do you think Noah and his family were feeling while they were on the ark? Yahweh never told them how long it would rain. He never told them how long they would be on the ark. He simply told them to prepare and how to prepare. And do you know what that took a great amount of? It took a great amount of faith. They had such great faith in Yahweh and His Word. They had faith that Yahweh would take care of their needs, that He would fulfill His promise to keep them safe. Noah and his family trusted and obeyed in Yahweh and His Word. Being obedient is how we walk out our faith. What great reward there was for Noah and his family for their faith and obedience. Do you remember what promise Yahweh made after they left the ark? He promised to never again flood the whole earth, and He sent a rainbow as a reminder of His covenant with us. What's a covenant, you ask? A covenant is just a fancy word for a promise. Covenants made with Yahweh are very important because He never breaks His promises. There will be people in your life who will let you down as they make mistakes, and they don't always keep their promises. But Yahweh is always faithful to His Word, just as He was with Noah. You'll see this important word again in the future, so tuck it away into your memory bank for now. I had fun learning about Noah with you today. Until next time, Shalom! Shalom boys and girls, this is Miss Lindsay, and for today's nature lesson, we are going to be talking about rainbows. Is it raining where you are? It's been a rainy day here in Texas. It's not always raining here. So honestly, when it does, we sure do appreciate all the rain that Yahweh gives us. One of the many reasons we love the rain is because with it comes the perfect conditions for one of Yahweh's most beautiful shows, the majestic, multicolored bows of light, the rainbow. It may seem intimidating to unravel the secret of the rainbow, but it's actually really simple. Rainbows are light that we can see reflecting through something like raindrops or glass. 
To understand this, we must learn about light. Light moves fast. In fact, it's the fastest anything could possibly move. But here's where it gets interesting. Light doesn't always move at the same speed. In the air, light moves the fastest. But when light passes through water or glass, the speed can slow down, kind of like you and I. If we're outside and we're running through the air, we can go really fast. But if we were in the water, we wouldn't be able to run as fast. We would be slowed down. The light we experience from the sun is something known as white light. White light is composed of all different colors that our eyes can see. This kind of light is known as visible light because we're able to see it with just our eyes. So when we're looking at a rainbow, the colors we see from top to bottom are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and then violet. These visible colors all have unique characteristics known as wavelengths. Going from red all the way to violet, the wavelength goes from the greatest to smallest. It's the wavelength that will determine how the different colors react when they go through a medium, such as a raindrop. So what makes the perfect condition for seeing a rainbow? We definitely cannot see it during the rainstorm because the clouds block most of the light. We also cannot see it when the sun is out because all the water vapor in the air has evaporated. So the best time to see a rainbow is just after the rainstorm has ended because we need both water droplets and sunlight for the rainbow to take place. So how does this connect? When white light from the sun passes through the raindrops, it scatters to all seven different colors. This scattering is what we call refraction. After scattering inside the rain droplet, the light reflects once until it finally exits the droplet and a rainbow is created. But did you know that when you see a rainbow, there's actually two there? Even though it could be really faint or hard to see with your eyes, there's always a second rainbow just above the first. But you will notice that the colors will be inverted from the original rainbow. That's because these light rays have undergone a second reflection inside the droplet. How cool is that? The secondary rainbow, which will be a little bit higher and fainter in color than the primary rainbow, will actually have its colors reversed. So instead of seeing the standard red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, we will see the colors as violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. That is just so neat. Another cool fact is while we're standing on the ground, we can only see the classic semi-circle rainbow. But when we're up high, like in an airplane looking down towards the ground, you can actually see a rainbow as a complete circle. Did you know that? Learning about rainbows is so fascinating. So let's recap what we learned. Rainbows are visible white light that we can see reflecting through things like raindrops or glass. And we see seven colors. Say them with me. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Good job. Well, I don't know about you, but I cannot wait for the next rainstorm so I can see more of Yahweh's beautiful rainbows. Until next time, Shalom. Wow. Noah really did have to display a lot of long suffering and patience, didn't he? Last week we learned that Noah spent so many years building the ark. That took a lot of patience. And then this week we learned that after all that was done, the flood came 
and he had to be on that boat for 150 days. However, it didn't end there. Then he had to wait for the ground to dry up. He had to wait for Yahweh to tell him it was safe to go off the ark. Now think about this for a moment. Did you ever think about what it was like to be on that ark? Do you think that it was boring? I mean, he only had him, his wife, and his three sons. Everyone else was gone. Oh, and their wives, of course, they had their wives. But everyone else was gone. And he had the animals. But it was still probably very hard to wait. And there was no TV back then. What do you think that Noah did to pass the time? That's a discussion that you can have with your parents. Maybe talk a little bit about the ways that Noah could have passed the time on that ark. Now, the next time that we have to be patient, we can think about that story and maybe display a little bit more long suffering. That story also tells us about another exciting event, the rainbow, the covenant sign in the clouds for us that Yahweh will never ever flood the earth again. And I don't know about you, but when I look at a rainbow, there is such a sense of peace that comes over me. I love to see a rainbow. And it reminds me of not just that covenant that he made long ago, but it reminds me about the, all the covenants that he made and all the promises that he made in the Bible. And I remember that his word is true and that I can count on him. Have you ever seen a double rainbow? Rainbows are so special. And I think when we look upon them that we can make them personal to us. What have you been praying to Yahweh about? Maybe he's reminding you that he hasn't forgotten about your prayers, that he remembers. Now we're gonna go and learn some more Hebrew. We're gonna learn some history and hear another great story. Shalom, Mishpacha. This is your Havara Yohana, or Miss Joanna, here with Bryn to present this week's Hebrew language lesson. Today we will learn how to say the names of many colors in Hebrew, as well as many related words from today's Bible story. Our Bible lesson continues on in Genesis, or... Bereshit. You've got that committed to memory. Today we learned about Noah, or Noah, and the chayot, or animals, on the teva, or ark, during the mabul, or flood, and what happened to them after the mabul. In last week's Hebrew language lesson, we learned how to say the names of many kinds of chayot, or animals, in Hebrew. And we talked about what it meant for chayot, or animals, to be tahor, or clean, and tame, or unclean. Last week I mentioned that people tend to be interested in the chayot, or animals, when discussing the story of Noah and the teva, or Noah and the ark. Likewise, they tend to think about the rainbow when learning about the events that occurred after the mabul or flood. So let's talk about the rainbow. The Hebrew word for rainbow is keshet, keshet. 
Rainbows are very beautiful, and people often get extremely excited when they see one, especially when they see a full rainbow or a double rainbow. In Tehillim, or Psalm 19, Melech David, or King David, says, Hashemayim meshaparim kabod el, uma se yadav magid harakia, which means, the heavens declare the glory of Elohim, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. And this is definitely true of the keshet, or rainbow. Now let's see exactly what Yahweh says about the keshet, or rainbow, in Be'er Sheet 9.17. And Elohim said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all of the flesh that is on the earth. So Yahweh said the keshet, or rainbow, is the sign of a covenant which he made between himself and all the earth. In the nine verses prior to verse 17, Yahweh uses the word covenant six other times and says the phrase sign of the covenant two more times. So we know that this is very important. In Hebrew, the word for covenant is brit, brit. A brit, or covenant, is an agreement between two or more people or groups. It's a promise to do or not to do something. Scripture records many britot, or covenants, that Yahweh made with the people. Yahweh promised to do certain things for the people, and he expected that they would do specific things in return. So Yahweh makes his promise, and if the people respond with a promise to do as Yahweh commanded, then they have accepted the covenant or brit with Yahweh. The thing is, people don't always keep their promises, but Yahweh always keeps his. In Yehoshua, or Joshua, 23.14, we read, You know with all your heart and soul that not one of all the good promises that Yahweh your Elohim gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. Concerning the keshet or rainbow, Yahweh repeats over and over again that it's a sign of the covenant that he made with Noach and all the earth, with Noach and all the chayot or animals, that he would never again send a mabul or flood to destroy the whole earth. Every time we see a keshet or rainbow, we are reminded that Yahweh has kept his promise not to send another mabul or flood upon the whole earth. The keshet or rainbow reminds us that Yahweh keeps all of his promises to his people. Now that we've learned that the keshet or rainbow is a sign of the covenant that Yahweh made and how Yahweh always keeps his promises, let's learn how to say the names of the colors of the keshet or rainbow in Hebrew. As always, I'll say the Hebrew word and then I'll repeat it and then you'll have time to say it after me. Okay. Let's begin. The Hebrew word for color is zeva, zeva. The Hebrew word for colors is zvaim, zvaim. In Hebrew, the color red is pronounced adom, adom. Adom or red is the zeva or color of blood. In Be'er Sheet 9, 3 through 4, Yahweh tells Noah, Every moving thing that is alive shall be food for you. I have given everything to you as I gave the green plant. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. The Hebrew word for blood is dam, dam. And dam or blood is red, or adom, adom. Interestingly, the red liquid that comes out of butchered meat when handling and cooking is called myoglobin. Myoglobin is an iron and oxygen binding protein in the muscle tissue of most mammals. Though myoglobin is a dome or red, it is not dom or blood. In Hebrew, the word for orange is katom, katom. Katom, or orange, is the zava or color of fire. After the mabul, or flood, had subsided and the ground was dry, 
When Noah was able to leave the Teva or Ark, he sacrificed burnt offerings to Yahweh. Bereshit 8, 20 through 21 says, Then Noah built an altar to Yahweh and took some of every kind of tahor or clean chayot or animal and some of every tahor or clean zippor or bird and offered a burnt offering on the altar. Yahweh smelled the soothing aroma and Elohim said to himself, I will never again curse the ground on account of man. For the intent of man's heart is evil from his youth, and I will never again destroy every living thing as I have done. The burnt offerings that pleased Yahweh were sacrificed on an altar with fire. The Hebrew word for fire is esh. Esh. Esh or fire is orange or katom. Katom. In Hebrew, the word for yellow is zahov, zahov. Zahov, or yellow, is the zeva, or color of the sun. Can you just imagine how lovely and bright and warm the sun would appear after 40 days of dark, rainy skies? The Hebrew word for sun is shemesh, shemesh. The shemesh, or sun, is yellow or zahov, zahov. In Hebrew, the word for green is yarok, yarok. After the mabul or flood, vegetation sprang back up all over the earth, and all green plants were once again said to be food for us, just as we read before in Bereshit 9. The Hebrew word for plant is zemach. Zemach. Many zemachim or plants are green or yarok, yarok. The word for blue in Hebrew is kahol, kahol. The sky is an enormous blue expanse. How brilliantly kahol or blue it must have appeared to Noah after 40 days of darkened skies covered in clouds as the rain fell. The Hebrew word for sky is Shemayim, Shemayim. The Shemayim, or sky, is blue, or Kahol, Kahol. Shemayim is also the Hebrew word used to refer to the heavens. In Hebrew, purple is pronounced Sagol, Sagol. In Bereshit 9.20, it says, Then Noah began to farm and plant a vineyard. A vineyard is where grapes are grown. The Hebrew word for grapes is anavim, anavim. Anavim are purple or sagol, sagol. In Hebrew, the word for brown is chum, chum. Dirt is chum, or brown. Noah would have planted his vineyard in rich chum, brown, dirt, or soil. The Hebrew word for dirt or soil is adoma, adoma. The adoma, or soil, is brown, or chum, chum. In Hebrew, the word for white is lavon, lavon. Clouds are often lavon, or white. In Bereshit 9.13, Yahweh says, I set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be for a sign of a covenant between me and the earth. The Hebrew word for clouds is ananim, ananim. The ananim are white, or lavon, lavon. The Hebrew word for black is shakor, shakor. Ravens are shakor, or black. In Bereshit 8, 6 through 7, we read, And it came to be, at the end of forty days, that Noah opened the window of the teva or ark, which he had made. And he sent out a raven, which kept going out and turning back, 
until the waters had dried up from the earth. The Hebrew word for raven is oreb, oreb. A raven or oreb is black or shakor, shakor. In Hebrew, the word gray is afor, afor. Some type of dove are afor, or gray. In Bereshit 8, 8 through 12, after sending out the oreb, or raven, Noah sends out a dove several different times. When the dove returns with an olive branch in its beak, Noah knows the flood waters are receding. And when the dove doesn't return, Noah knows it's time to leave the ark. The Hebrew word for dove is yonah. Yona. Some types of yona or dove are gray or a four, a four. Kol hakavod. Well done. You've learned so many more new Hebrew words this week. But I still have a question to ask. What is your favorite zeva or color? Oh, all of those are such beautiful zvaim. While I really do love all the zvaim or colors that Yahweh created, my favorite zeva probably has to be kahol or blue. My favorite shade of kahol is called cyan in English. It's a light blue color that is between kahol, blue, and yarok or green on the color spectrum. It's the color of robin's eggs. In modern Hebrew, some people refer to this color, or zeva, as tehillet. Kahol, or blue, is mentioned myriad times in scripture. One such reference is in Bamid Bar, or Numbers, 15.37-41, through 41, wherein Yahweh commands the making and wearing of zitziot to remind ben Yisrael, or the children of Israel, to do all that he has commanded. Along with the command to place the zitziot on the kanaf, which can be translated as corner, hem, edge, wing, or extremity of our garments, Yahweh also commands that each zitzit is to have a cord of blue. This week, as you practice saying the zvayim, or colors in Hebrew, it might also be fun for you to look into the scriptures and see what they have to say about your favorite zeva or color. As we close our lesson for the week, I want you to remember that Yahweh called his creation tov, or good, and he made it with many splendid zvayim in myriad gvanim, or hues. He also created you, Betzalem Elohim, in the image of Elohim. And as such, you are in breach or covenant with Yahweh, and Yahweh never breaks his promises. Until next time, my Dodi Havarim, Shalom Bishem Yeshua HaMashiach, or peace to you in the name of Yeshua Messiah. History of what the flood left behind. Shabbat Shalom, friends. Today we are talking about after the flood. Now, do you remember how last week we talked about Noah on the ark with all those animals and how Yah flooded the earth? Well, have you ever wondered what happened to all those animals that didn't go on the ark? Because I know I sure have. But don't worry, we won't have to wonder for much longer. Because today we are going to learn what happened to them all. Now, have you ever heard of a fossil? Do you know what a fossil is? Well, a fossil is a skeleton or exoskeleton of an animal that had a rapid burial and preservation before they could rot. People find fossils all over. A fossil can be anything from a small bug to a dinosaur. Now, most people believe dinosaurs and dragons are myths, but if we look in the Bible, there are many verses and chapters that tell us about the Leviathan and Behemoth. It says in Job 40, 17-18, where it talks about the behemoth. He bends his tail like cedar. The sinews of his thighs are knit together. 
His bones are like tubes of bronze. His ribs are like bars of iron. And then it says in Job 41, 19 through 22, where it talks about the Leviathan. Out of his mouth go fire brands. Sparks of fire shoot out. Out of his nostrils comes smoke like a boiling pot or kettle. His breath sets coal on fire and flames go out of his mouth. Strength dwells in his neck and fear leaps before him. Nobody is 100% sure of what these are or what they look like. There's a chance that what we know as dinosaurs could be overgrown lizards, which would make sense because humans and animals used to live around a thousand years old back then. We had pretty good ideas of what they may have looked like from the fossils archaeologists find. An archaeologist is somebody that studies ancient things, including fossils. People find fossils all over, even in the highest of mountains. They found sea creatures up in Mount Everest. That's the highest mountain in the world. And I'm not sure if you realize this or not, but clams are not the best hikers. They've even found a giant whale on top of a mountain covered in diatomaceous earth. They find fossils in the weirdest places. They've even found them in the middle of deserts. And there's only one explanation that can explain all that, and that answers the flood. There are many theories of what happened during the flood. Though nobody truly knows what happened, it is pretty cool to think about. When we think about the flood, we think of the story of Noah and how y'all saved him and a few of every animal from the flood. But there's a lot more to it than it seems. When we look at the world's design, we don't realize just how much the flood did. Here's a picture of some rocks. Do you realize how they lean and curve? Well, rocks don't naturally do that. That took a lot of fast moving water and high heat. I bet you everywhere you look, you'll find something the flood created and left behind. So the next time you're driving around or taking a nice walk through the woods, be sure to look around and see what you can find and enjoy y'all's creation and the remains of the flood. That's all for today. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. I'm Miss Kaylee, and I'm going to do a story with you today. Well, we're going to do a little different today. Uh, I'm not actually going to tell you a story. So I've been thinking about Noah and his family and all the animals on the ark and just thinking about them locked up, pinned up in this boat, which it was a big boat, but still they couldn't go anywhere, uh, getting tossed around on the sea. They might be getting seasick. And it's just got me thinking, have you ever been on a long car trip? maybe an hour, maybe all day. And by the time you get done and you get out of the car, you just can't wait to get out. Your legs are so achy from sitting there doing nothing and you just want to get out and stretch your legs and run around and play and go to the bathroom, go get something to eat. Just do something different than sitting there all day. Well, I've had lots of those trips and I always, and even you're tired. You sit there and you did nothing all day, but you're tired when you get out. You still want to get out and stretch your legs, but it's just, for some reason, it's tiring too. So you stretch your legs a little bit and then you go sit back down. At least that's what I do. But uh, just thinking about them, they weren't there for a day in the ark. They weren't there for a week. They weren't there for a month. They were there for months in the ark, just sitting there, getting tossed around. We don't know what Noah did with the animals, whether they were in uh, some of them in cages or crates or if they had little stalls built. It doesn't tell us exactly what they did, but I figure they probably did some kind of stall so they weren't just getting thrown around with the waves and tossed from one side of the boat back to the other um, and just give them a little like safe place to be where their food went. Everybody wasn't going to steal their food. I don't know if you have animals, but I know when we feed our animals, they're greedy. They want to come and take the other one's food. And so I just kind of figure they probably had some kind of stalls to help keep them separated. And I'm just thinking when they finally got to the day when Yahweh said, okay, you can come out of the ark. Now you back up. Do you realize that the boat actually stopped on the mountain and then they had to wait longer before they could even come out of the ark, even knowing that there's ground? They had to wait until Yahweh said, okay, it's time. And so again, even though they're not getting tossed, they just have to sit there and sit there and sit there. And so once they finally get to come out, 
I'm sure those animals were running and playing and leaping and so excited to see the fresh green grass and the green leaves and get to go eat something green. I know as kids, we often don't like salad, but if you had to go for months and all you ate was dried food, uh, dried fruits, dried meats, dried vegetables, and you had like grains just to have like cereal and bread and that's like all you ate. You didn't have any salad, any tomatoes on your hamburger, anything like that. You would really, really, really want to eat that salad. I would anyway. And so I'm sure them animals were excited to go from just having grain and hay to having green grass and having leaves that were growing to get to eat. So today for our game, I'm going to show you an animal and I'm going to see if you can do something. Now you got to be quick and you got to hurry because I'm going to say, can you, and then I'm going to tell you what can you do and let's see if you can do it. And if it happens to be something that you can't do, you can just freestyle it and just do something else that's fun real quick before I give you the next can you. So let's go see and have fun. Are you ready to play? Come on, let's go. Can you run and jump? Great job. Can you shake your head? Can you roar like a lion? Can you wiggle your ears? That one might be a little hard. You might need a little help. You can use your hands. Can you make your hair a silly hairdo? Oh, that's a great one. Can you spin around? Go faster. Don't fall down. Can you sit down? Can you lay down? Can you stand up? Can you put your hands in the air? Can you touch your toes? Hurry real fast. Can you share with somebody? Go quickly. Can you make a silly face? Can you stick your tongue out and touch your nose? That one's hard. You might need to use your fingers to help. Can you look from side to side? Can you yawn great big? Are you ready for a nap? Can you flap your wings? You'll have to use your arms. Can you wiggle your tail? Can you chew? Just pretend you're chewing. I bet those animals are really excited to get some new leaves and green grass and some yummy green stuff. Can you swim? Lay down on the floor and just pretend you're swimming. Go all around, be like a seal. That's a great job. Can you run really fast? Don't knock anybody or anything over. Can you hop around like a kangaroo? Be careful. Can you give somebody a high five? Hurry, give them one real quick. 
Can you lay down? Can you give somebody some kisses? Hurry, go give them a bunch. Can you puff up your cheeks real big? Can you touch your head? Can you put your hands on your head? This one's a tricky one. Can you wiggle your ears and your nose? If you need help with your hands, that's fine. Wiggle your ears and your nose. Can you go give your brother or sister or your friend a hug? And if they're not around, go give somebody else a hug. Be still, don't move. Don't move a muscle. Can you be still? All right, stretch out your neck. Can you stretch out your neck? Stretch it out further. Can you get it any further than that? Stretch real hard. Can you stick out your tongue? Can you do a tumble? Be careful. Great job. Can you waddle like a duck? Can you lay down and pretend you're asleep? Close your eyes. Don't move. Can you go give your mom or your dad a hug? Give them some good loving. Hurry, go real quick. Can you say your prayers? In a minute, we're gonna be saying our prayers and we'll have somebody help you. All right, let's sit down and get back to our lesson. Are you ready? Let's go. Yahweh told Noah, there's gonna be a floody, floody. Yahweh told Noah, there's gonna be a floody, floody. Get those animals out of the muddy, muddy children of Yahweh. So rise and shine and give Yah the honor, honor, rise and shine and give Yah the honor, honor. Children of Yahweh. So rise 
and shine and give ya the honor on her eyes and shine and give ya the honor on her eyes and shine and give ya the honor on her children of Yahweh. The Noah he sent out, he sent out a dovey dovey Noah. He sent out, he sent out a dovey dovey, sent him to the heavens above, he got the children of Yahweh. So rise and shine and give ya the honor on her eyes and shine, give ya the honor on her eyes and shine and give ya the honor on her children of Yahweh. The sun, it came out and dried up the landy, landy sun. It came out and dried up the landy, landy. Everything was fine, dandy, dandy, children of Yahweh. So rise and shine and give ya the honor, honor, rise and shine. And give ya the honor, honor, rise and shine. And Give ya the honor, honor, children of Yahweh. Shabbat Shalom. I am so thankful to be here again to share with you all our memory verse for the week. Our memory verse comes out of Bereshith 9.13. Bereshith 9.13 says, I have placed my rainbow in the clouds. It is a sign of my covenant with you and with all the earth. Wow, what a beautiful reminder Yahweh has given us. How many times do you see a rainbow and are reminded of Yahweh's forever promise? Yahweh gave us a beautiful rainbow to remind us how much he loves us although we as humans will always have sin yahweh promised to never again curse the earth because of it anytime you see a rainbow you can always be reminded of yahweh's love for us and all his living creatures i want to give a shout out to my daughter alaya who helped me this week with our memory verse our memory verse once again is bear sheet 913 and it says i have placed my rainbow in the clouds it is a sign of my covenant with you and with all the earth shabbat shalom have a wonderful week i really enjoyed all those songs hebrew stories lessons and prayers did you now Let's go hear a memory verse, do a fun arts and crafts project, and sing another song. I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's go. For today's craft, you are going to need a glue stick, a black marker, scissors, white paper, and construction paper in all the colors of the rainbow. Now with our white paper, we're going to draw a nice big cloud. And in our cloud, we are going to write Yahweh is faithful. Now with your rainbow colors, you're going to just cut out strips. And then make sure you cut out your cloud. Now using your glue, we're going to glue on our rainbow to our cloud.
Now with your family, I want you to find a verse for each color of the rainbow that tells us how Yahweh is faithful. Now this represents the rainbow that Yahweh told us was a symbol forever that he would not flood the earth. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that for my red one. And that's Genesis 9, 11. And that says, And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And this is his reminder to us. I hope you all enjoyed your Shabbat lesson this week. I hope to see you all next week and that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Hello boys and girls, this is Susie and this is Libby. I have a very special guest with me today, my six-year-old daughter. Today we're off on a prayer walk. A prayer walk is simply a walk you take around your neighbourhood with one of your parents or a trusted adult and you pray as you go, with your eyes open of course. You can talk to Yah as if he were a friend right there with you. Are you ready? Almost. Libby, has Yah ever told a lie? No. Has he ever broken a promise? No. What do we call that? Faithfulness. Yes, faithfulness. From Noah until now, he has always been faithful. In fact, from the very start, Yah has been truthful and faithful. We see it magnified through the scriptures. Well, let's pray. Yah, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that you never change. Thank you, Yah, that you never told a lie. And thank you that you never broke your promise. We ask that that truth would be real to us this week. We pray that it would give us courage and strength for the days to come. We pray that you would bless our week. In Yeshua's name. Until next time. Bye. Bye.